Hi everyone, I'm Sammy Caps. Welcome to my channel. Tonight, we experienced the Diablo 4 PTR for the very first time. And in this video, I'm gonna give you my first impressions. I got asked continually all night, is it better? What's your first impressions? Do you recommend? Well, this week, I will be dropping a video every day on one certain aspect of the new big changes coming to season four of Diablo 4. And in this video, we're gonna start off by focusing on tempering, what it does, how it works, all the good, bad, and ugly of tempering. Um, I'm also at the end of the video gonna give you my first impressions and take on the public test realm. So I hope you'll join me and stick around. We got a lot to talk about. We'll see you on the other side. Okay, so first things first, as soon as you log into the game, obviously you create a character. Prior to being able to get the PTR boost and get your level 100 character, you have to quickly do the prologue. It's not long. The prologue is very quick and easy to do. It eventually ends you, ends up taking you to the town of Kovashad and directly above the Kovashad waypoint is a PTR boost NPC. You click on him, you click PTR boost and boom, you get level 100 character. You get two sets of ancestral legendary gear and you get nine tempering manuals five legendary and four rare and we'll talk more about those manuals later on now what i did was i went and automatically immediately once getting the ptr boost i went and entered world tier four you the ptr boost also unlocks the region progress so the renown the two there's five ta five regions two of the regions are fully unlocked so you get all the renown benefits from two of the regions which you can claim you also get 54 skill points which you can assign all the skills on your character and all the Paragon board is unlocked for you to fully activate the pair all the Paragon boards for your class and character. Okay, so you've done the prologue, you went to the PTR boost NPC right above the Kovashed waypoint, you've gotten your gear, you've assigned your skills, you've done your Paragon board, you've equipped the gear, you're ready to go. Some of the things that I want to quickly just want to highlight because I was asked a lot about it was the new zooming out feature in what is going to be in season four of Diablo four. So I went over here to kind of try to demonstrate it. This is the normal standard view, what you're seeing now. And as you can see here, there's a tree branch that's literally right at the top of my screen. Um, and I want you to focus in on that because that's kind of going to give us some perspective on how much more we are zoomed out. So this is the standard view that we all are familiar with in Diablo 4. And in order to use the new zoomed out feature, all you have to do is hit escape, hit options. It's the very first tap for graphics. And you just scroll down and you can see view distance standard you can go far you save the changes close and there you go you can see the little zoomed out and now you can see this much of a gap between the top of your screen and the branch which was here is the difference so it's a nice little bump i actually think it's a really good change. The point of view, that little extra zoomed out really adds 
um it's nice i liked it and i definitely will be choosing the far version not the standard version so again it's literally a little bit down under view distance the other thing i was getting asked about was my mouse clicker pointer green larger and people were asking me how did you do that and again it's on the same graphics page now i don't know if this existed before i don't remember seeing it but i might have missed it but basically you can just as far as making your cursor small or large it's just a matter of cursor scale whether you want a regular size pointer medium size pointer or a large pointer like mine and then really the color all you have to do is come here pick the color you want accept it and your mouse pointer will be the color that you assign now i do it because when you're dealing with a lot of ads and mobs i want to see where my mouse pointer is on the screen it helps me navigate all the mobs that you're playing and trying to destroy in the game so i thought i'd share that with you but the point of view changes the farther out change point of view a plus in my books okay so let's take a deep dive into tap ring this is the new system that will allow you to add affixes to your items at any blacksmith through a new reusable item that can drop from most content in the game and that's called temper manuals and the temper manuals are categorized like the codex of power so for example resources mobility etc now once you get these temper manuals you retain this manual for unlimited use and we're going to explain and demonstrate this a little bit further on in the video now each manual contains a handful of affixes that you are able to attach to an item a gear a weapon at any time now affixes can be re-rolled up to the item's temper re-roll limit. I'm gonna explain and demonstrate that further in a little bit. Now, ancestral items can have two tempering affixes from different categories, okay? So let's, let me try to break this down for you. Now, remember when I told you that when you got the, the PTR boost to 100, the game automatically gave, will give you nine tempering manuals. And basically what you do now, I've already used them, um, but they'll be in your inventory and you just right click it and you learn that tempering manual and you will now be able to use it in when you temper. Okay. So in order to temper, you need to go to any blacksmith and there are tabs that the blacksmith have, which are salvage, repair, tempering, and then master working. Now we're not gonna get into master working on this video. That video will be in the future and we'll take a deep dive and explain it like how I'm gonna explain tempering. Okay, so you go to the tempering section with the blacksmith you right click any manuals that you get and they'll be in your first equipment screen so anytime one drops it'll show up on your inventory again right click it to learn it and it'll show up when you go to temper an item now a couple of things i want to note the new changes that came that are coming to season four all ancestral legendary items automatically come with three affixes as you can see with the this equipped pair of pants it has dexterity maximum life and dodge chance we have the potential to add two more affixes through tempering and masterworking to this piece of item rare items come with two affixes and in the case of this rare crossbow it has maximum life and damage over time as its two affixes okay now in order 
to temper. Number one, you're going to have to get tempering manuals. And in, because when you get a tempering manual that you learned, it will show up in the tempering recipes. If you haven't learned that recipe through attaining a tempering manual, it will not be here and you will not be able to put those associated affixes onto the item. So what I'm showing you today is limited because I have not gotten all the tempering manuals. How many exist? I don't know. I've tried to get that number, but I can't find how many tempering manuals there are out, out there. There are out there. So um, I am limited to the few that I got. I got nine with the PTR boost, and I got additional three more through playing the end game content when I was grinding the PTR tonight. Um, so I ended up with 12 tempering manuals total on my first day. Nine given, three dropped in the world when I was grinding. Um, so just keep that in mind. Getting tempering manuals are very important because it'll increase the ethics pool that you can choose from when you want to temper a piece of item. Now, the other thing that's very important, and if we look at this sword, you can see a couple of things. Number one, <clears throat> there are the three affixes already assigned to it, dexterity, maximum life, attack speed. But really what I want you to focus on is at the bottom right corner, right under cell value, you'll see tempers five out of five. That means we are able to attempt to put a certain affix on this sword five times. After the fifth time, you will not be able to temper anything on this item anymore. As far as I can tell, I slammed a ring over its temper limit and I wasn't able to put it back into the tempering box here. Uh, it would not allow me to transfer the item over because there was no more tempers on that ring. Uh, now, that's what I learned tonight. Whether there is a mechanic down the road or one that I haven't experienced that allows you to add tempering, I don't think so. I don't think that exists. Basically, what this is, you, are, you have five slams on this item to put whatever affixes you want on the specific item. So, for example, okay, this sword has dexterity, maximum life, and attack speed. When you put it in, it tells you that you have two recipe categories, weapons and offense. So you click on one, and again, I have only found the natural finesse uh, recipe, okay? So this is the only option I have because I was not able to find more tempering manuals under the offensive category, if that makes any sense. So if I select this, which I will for demonstration purposes, you can see now that I am going to temper this item and there's RNG in this. Okay, so I'm going to get either damage damage to crowd control, damage to close enemies, and damage to distant enemies. Now, let's say my preferred affix, the one I really want, is damage to close enemies, right? I will temper this item. Now, here is the cost. It's 10 iron chunks, 20 veiled crystals, and two baleful, baleful fragments. Now, this stuff is all salvaged when you salvage legendary items. This is when you salvage rare items. And this is when you salvage from a weapon or jewelry. So very important, as we already know, guys, salvage your drops, the ones you're not using, salvage them at the blacksmith because you're going to need these items. Okay, so remember, this one item, 
fresh. It has five tempers. Now, I don't know if this is because it's the PTR and they want to give us a free temper, but the first temper, you'll notice, tempers, five out of five, that is not going to drop to four out of five when I hit temper. Um, I'm thinking that because it's the PTR, they're giving us a free temper, and I'll explain further. So pay attention to the bottom right tempers, five out of five, okay? So now I'm going to hit temper, and I want damage to close enemy. So boom, let's temper. It goes through the mechanic, and we got crowd control. That's not what I wanted, right? Now, as you can see, tempers, five out of five. It didn't take a temper away from me. So now I still have five slams on this item, and that's great because I didn't get damage to close enemies. Now, the other thing I want you to pay attention to, you notice the damage to crowd control enemies, Affex, has an anvil to the left of it. That is telling us that this item has been tempered with the little anvil um, icon. And that's good to know because it will show on all your other equipment what you've tempered and what you have not tempered. So for example, my helm, you can see I put and tempered fire resistance on this. And I was lucky because I still have five out of five tempers, which means on my first slam, I got what I wanted. Um, this, I slammed poison resistance. And as you can see, it took me five attempts, the free one and four more in order to get poison resistance on it. So the little anvil next to the um, FX is telling you that you tempered that FX onto whatever, the gear, the weapon. Okay, so let's go back to our demonstration. So I want damage to close uh, enemies. I got damage to crowd control. So again, I'm gonna pick the same recipe that I picked the first time. Remember, once you learn the recipe through the tempering manual, it's unlimited use. You get to use it as many times as you want. Of course, you're limited by the number of tempers on the item. And of course, the material cost. Okay, so again, RNG related. We didn't get damage to close enemies. We still have five tempers. Always pay attention to the bottom right, guys. So I'm going to slam this again. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we get damage to close enemies. We got distant enemies, so that's not what we wanted. And as you can see, the tempers is now four out of five. So it consumed one of my tempers of the five. So we're gonna slam it again because I love this sword and I want damage to close enemies. So again, I picked the natural finesse tempering manual recipe and I slam it again. And it's still crowd control. Bad RNG. I got three more slams. So I am going to slam it again. Bingo. Beautiful. So we got damage to close enemies. Now. I got 75% damage to close enemies. The range is 62 and a half to 85 okay so smack dab in the middle so i can make a couple of decisions here i have two smashes left two tempers left as you can see on the bottom two of five i can choose ah 75 percent i would have liked 80 percent or more should i take a risk i only have two more um, slams tempers left on this item then I won't be able to do anything with the item anymore as far as tempering um, or do I elect to pick and add another affix which these are all the tempering manuals that I've learned so far as you can see elemental surge and this is chance to deal a specific type of damage physical fire lightning this one is for 
a chance for puncture to cast twice um, and etc you can see all the rare uh, all the items here this one is uh, allowing twisting blade to return chance for barrage to cast twice chance for rapid fire to projectile to cast twice and this one has these affixes and you can pick which ones you want now as you can see Tempering manuals also come in rare form and legendary form. Obviously, that impacts the uh, affix quality, legendary being better than rare, right? These, are, these three are rare. This one is legendary. Now, I'm playing a barrage build, so I would like the chance for rapid fire. So we are going to go and try our luck and try to get... Um, the barrage projectile to cast twice. Now, we already have damage to close enemies. We're gonna add another affix. Hopefully we'll get barrage. We'll slam it. And we got penetrating shot, unlucky. Now, as you can see, there are now two affixes that I added damage to close enemies and now we just added chance for penetrating shot now i have two tempers left two chances to do whatever i want now i'm not playing penetrating shot so i'm gonna pick this again okay and let's hope we get barrage if not we have a decision to make Okay, rapid fire. Now, we have damage to close enemies and we have rapid fire. I have one slam left. So, this is where you make a decision. You can try to increase the damage to close enemies 75%. Remember, I, I would have liked 80 and above. Now, remember, if I do take this chance, there's there's two chance there's two uh chances that can happen two things that can happen here number one i have to hope out of damage damage to crowd control enemies damage to close enemies damage to distant enemies i get damage to close enemies right because there is a chance that i will not get damage to close enemies it'll give me damage to distant enemies therefore i lose the damage to close enemies so the damage to close enemies, the 75%, I have to be really lucky to temper this, hope that it's close enemies, number one, and number two, that the reassigned value, this right now I have 75%, is higher. So to me, that the probability of that happening is pretty rare. But if you're risky, you can take a chance. Now, I'm gonna demonstrate to you what I mean by that, because that might be a little bit compu confusing. I don't understand, Sammy. You already have damage to close enemies. If you select the natural finesse category, won't it just re-roll to 75%? You already have damage to close enemies. What I'm trying to tell you is no. You have to hope that damage to close enemies gets select again out of these four um uh choices and then you also have to hope that it's above 75 percent it could be lower remember the range is 62 and a half to 85 okay now i if if i was doing this for real i would try to get the barrage projectile to fire twice again on this item but in order to show you what I just talked about, remember, we are now re-rolling the 75% damage to close enemies. It may pick close enemies again and reassign the 75%, or it may completely change the close enemies and give me something else. So just to show you that, and unfortunately, I can't. Why? Because we don't have enough equipment unlucky but i hope that shows you what i mean by that okay 
that's how tempering works you have five tempers five slams in order to create and add two more affixes to an item and there's rng involved because through the tempering manuals you have a random list of affixes that can be added to your item you cannot select for example i want damage to close enemies i can't say i want damage to close enemies slam it and i get it it's there's so there's rng number one and all items have a temper value which represents how many times you can re-roll the item and get the affixes that you want for a lack of a better term now personally i think a temper value of five is not enough can you imagine if this sword that i just demonstrated and sorry that i ran out of mats but i was tempering all night tonight um so I, i've been through a i've gone through a lot of material uh, but can you imagine this is the sword that oh my god the first three affixes on it are solid exactly what i want you come here and you do not get let's just say damage to close enemies now remember you're going to want to add two affixes to the item because you can right so you have five chances to add the two affixes that you want on an item and when you think about it the odds of you getting what you want because every temper manual has anywhere from four to five and look at this one one two three four five this one has six chance six different affixes that it can choose from when it's when you slam it one out of any one of these sixes can be added so i could literally spend all my five tempers on this elemental surge affix list let's say i wanted cold damage right while well, i slam it oh i got physical damage i slam it again oh i got poison damage i slap look you see my point five tempers is not enough in my opinion especially when you're talking about gear and game gear that you finally get something to drop and the three affixes that are on it are good potentially you are bricking the item and what do i mean by that is for example this one for sure is a great example i should have used this one i'm playing barrage can you imagine if i temper this and i get rapid fire or penetrate like a skill i'm not using i've bricked the item so basically long story short is five tempers on items to me is not enough i think it has to be a minimum 10 uh, in order to give us in order for us to combat the rng element in tempering okay so hopefully that muddies the water for you for tempering <laughs> apologies for running out of materials what can i say <clears throat> I was basically tempering all night. Um, so apologies. Of course, of course, when you do a live demonstration, something's bound to go happen. But all jokes aside, I hoped my demonstration of the tempering helped you in understanding more about the tempering. Now, my first night of the PTR, I also did a couple of other things that I want to talk about. Then at the end, of this video i'm going to give you my first impressions of the ptr so on my first night i did like i said and i showed you we did a lot of um a lot of research on tempering and how it works and i displayed that to you now when i first got on i boosted to 100 i got my gear apparently the two sets of gear that are class specific that you get is rng related i guess i got the low end of the pool rng my gear was like really trash um so i was forced and i wanted to try it anyway i went over and started doing hell tides 
and I'm going to pop up a little video box here to kind of have that uh, play through uh, in here beside me so you can see it while I'm talking. Um, and I have to say, uh, the Helltides, A+, plus, big difference than what I'm used to. Uh, a lot of good things. So the density of mobs is r spot on spot on R like high density mobs really good you literally can't walk 10 feet without running into some mobs so i loved the high density of mobs there's a threat meter there's bosses uh enraged bosses that you can uh summon there's a whole bunch of stuff on top of the normal stuff that we're already used to on hell tides so huge improvements on Hell tides. It was uh, a lot of fun, and I think they did a great job on the changes to the Hell Tide. Now, yesterday I went into with a certain idea of what I wanted to do, and one of the things that I wanted to do on top of the tempering was I wanted to blast the pit, which is a new end game feature in season four. Now, I'm not going to get into it on this video. I'm going to cover the pit on another video, but I went in right away. Once I got my gear, I boosted to 100, I set myself up. I'm like, okay, let's go to the pit. <clears throat> I went to the pit. And again, I'm not going to get into what you need and how it works. I'm going to cover that on another video. And anyway, as soon as I went in right off the bat, I got my ass handed to me. I couldn't make it past 10 feet. Uh, I'm like, okay, I got to gear up. That's when I went and I grinded hell tides to get better gear, which I did. And then things got better. And then at the end of the evening, I went back to the pit and I finished uh, tier one and tier two uh, pit. Now, again, I'm going to cover that in uh, another video. Uh, so I did the pit and we'll talk about that later. And I did not touch master working at all all i did not do the torment bosses at all obviously i couldn't even handle doing higher level uh pit so i'm i'm not there yet but i will be um so that's kind of how my first experience of the ptr went tonight now what everyone was asking me they weren't asking me how i was doing they were asking me D4 good, what do you think? Is it worth it? Should I come back? You know, those kind of questions. So here's my first impressions of the PTR. So the good, the good, Hell Tides, much improved. The itemization that I've experienced so far, again, huge step forward with the tempering and if the tempering is any indication of the ma what the master working is going to be like, which I have not experienced, then I think the itemization changes that they've made in Diablo 4 look like it's a step forward. Okay? I've heard the torment bosses are a lot tankier and take a longer time to kill. So if that is true, that's another step in the right direction. So there are definitely, in my opinion, this is definitely going to be a major step forward compared to the other seasons. Definitely a home run compared to season three, which was a complete disaster and season one. Um, I would even argue my initial take, it's going to be better than season two. Uh, however, let's get into the bad. So again, these are my opinions. The bad. No matter where I went in the game, it felt the same. Now, you have to understand, I have not played Diablo 4 since the beginning of season three. And prior to that, I hadn't played until I, I think I stopped playing season two, like weeks into it. So literally since 
the end of season one, which I also didn't play all of, there are gaps of months, weeks. So it's suffice to say that I haven't played Diablo 4 a lot since the original launch where I grinded the crap out of the game and hundreds of hours in the game. Um, so keep that in the back of your mind. But even for me, someone that's not been day in, day out grinding Diablo 4, no matter where I went, it's the same mobs, it's the same scenery, everything feels like a component of something else that I'm familiar with. Like even the pit, I don't know if this is a right analogy, but it, it's like a condensed nightmare dungeon, if that makes sense. The mobs are the same, the landscape is the same, nothing has been added, nothing is new. Like, oh wow, this is a new scenery, new area that looks different. Uh, I, I didn't get that. Um, so that's kind of, to me, the bad. The other thing that I think is going to surface itself up, the more and more players play Diablo 4, is I think the wall of boredom and the same old, same old thought process, I think that's going to hit them again. I, that's the impression I got. Now, don't get me wrong. Tonight is the most fun I've had in Diablo 4 in a long time. It was a lot of fun, but that's because I haven't played in a while. It's my first time back in a long time. And even though everything felt the same, there were, I noticed differences. The point of view uh, change, A+. Plus. The itemization, I give it a B+. Plus. Um, I think there's more that they could do with the itemization, specifically the tempering. I don't like the fact that you're limited by five tempers. I don't know if I really like the RNG aspect of the affixes and the re-rolling. In other words, you can't target a certain affix and say, this is what I want to add. Now, I understand at the end of the day, in all the itemizational mechanics in all games, there's RNG involved, of course. Uh, I, I totally understand that. But I just think there's a little bit too much RNG in this um, in this itemization mechanic. And I, I, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, so the, what I would recommend and what I'm going to recommend in my feedback to Activision Blizzard King is the fact that five tempers is not enough. Now, you can leave it on the rare items, but on the ancestral legendary items, I think it needs to be a minimum of 10, just because can you imagine having a godly role on one of your le ancestral legendary items where you have three affixes that are on the item when they're dropped and they're godly drops, and now you go to temper it and masterwork it so you can add two more affixes and you only have five tempers available to you and you get one that's not related to your build. So the example I showed you, I was playing Barrage and one of the affixes, the pool of affixes was one in five or sorry, one in four. The other affixes were related to other skills that I don't use on my Barrage build. It was rapid fire, penetrating shot. That would in essence brick my weapon because it's a skill I don't use. So I don't like that um, just because it has the potential to really eliminate a godly drop. So for ancestral legendary items, I think the tempering has to be at least 10 tempers minimum in order to combat the RNG mechanic in the tempering. Um, so look, at the end of the day, there are other games. So guys, when I evaluate a game, there's a lot of things that I look for. Are they doing anything new? Are they doing anything better than what's out there already? These are kind of the things that are in the back of my head when you're evaluating a game. Now, there's no denying, irrespective of how I feel and my impression, the what I experienced tonight 
is by far much better than what I've experienced prior to tonight. I want to get that out of the way. This is a step forward for Diablo 4, but I'm not comparing it just to Diablo 4 because at the end of the day, this is an ARPG. So the competition plays a factor into whether or not someone's going to play it because players are going to look at this game and say, okay, what are the other games out there that I like that are in this genre? And are they better? Do I like that game better? So when I dissect itemization in the PTR, I'm thinking about the itemization that I mechanic that I've experienced in other ARPGs. So I compare it to that standard. So when I do that, my opinion is this falls in the middle of that, an improvement compared to what Diablo 4 has had itself. But when I compare it to the other itemization mechanics in other top ARPGs, it's a cup below, in my opinion. Improvement within the game, absolutely. But when you compare it to others, it could use some improvements. And some of those are, I would limit, I would reduce the amount of RNG and I would increase the tempers on the end game gear. So you don't potentially brick an item that already has three awesome affixes. But that's my take on itemization. All right, there you have it. That's my review of day one. In the next upcoming videos, we're gonna review the other mechanics in the PTR. And as always, I hope you found this video informative. Please, if you've participated in the PTR on day one, let me know your feedback and your thoughts. What are your first impressions of the PTR? Get into the comments section. I would love to hear what other experiences have been for other players. And for those players that can't participate or are sitting on the sidelines waiting for this game to add something that's going to bring them back, can you let me know what your thoughts are and what you've seen, what you've read, what you've heard? Is this enough so far to bring you back into playing Season 4 of Diablo 4? Anyway, that's my first day on the PTR. We're going to be grinding a little bit more with the Diablo 4 PTR, and I'm going to make some more videos on some of the end game mechanics that I refer to in this video. Specifically, I'm talking about the what I am focusing on is the itemization loop, as I've referred to it many times. So please, if you can like, comment, and subscribe, I would really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the bell. This way you get notified of when my videos drop and you can continue to hear and see my feedback on my PTR experience. As always, thank you so much everyone for watching my video, commenting on my video, subscribing to my channel. I really do appreciate it. It's an honor to be able to do content and have you guys watch it. So thank you very much. And as always, we'll hope to see you next time. Take care, everyone. The opinions expressed in this video are mine and solely mine. Healthy debate is always encouraged. Hate is never welcomed. So get over it.